Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, I want to talk about equipment again uh, today. Now, um, anyone that's been a regular viewer will know that most of my videos are out on location, either taking landscape photographs or wildlife pictures. But occasionally um, I do a video about kit. And if you've been watching this channel, channel on a regular basis, you'll know that I'm thinking about switching to a, a mirrorless body for uh, wildlife photography. And I won't go over all the reasons why I want to do that, but just quickly to say that one, it's because a mirrorless body will be much quieter, so there's less chance of me scaring wildlife away that's close to me. And secondly, I'm shooting a lot more video footage now and the electronic viewfinder will be a real bonus for that. Um, but I've already done um, a video about why I think mirrorless is really good for wildlife photography. So, you know, um, that will be in the, uh, the back catalogue of my videos. But today I want to talk about um, a few different makes of cameras actually because I've been looking at uh, Nikon's mirrorless bodies in great detail and again I did a video on whether I'm going to choose um, the Z6 II or the Z7 II. So um, I talked about really the difference between um, a lower megapixel and um, the faster frame rate and better noise uh, control uh, versus the higher megapixel sensor that gives you more detail and more ability to crop but gives you a slower frame rate and also um, it's not going to be as good at controlling noise although still very good and um, I sort of thought I'd made my mind up because the reason I was thinking about the Nikons I was waiting for the Z6 II and the Z7 II to come out because on the original cameras the Z6 and the Z7 the autofocus you know wasn't that great uh, or I don't uh, certainly not until the firmware updates come up so I was sort of holding off and waiting for um, the, the Z6 II uh, and the Z7 II to come out and uh, there's been a number of improvements so autofocus has definitely been improved which is great they've also got two card slots which is great and um, better video performance so it ticks you know those cameras do start to tick all the boxes but you know th I still can't make my mind up between the Z6 II and the Z7 II. Um, you know, because neither camera is absolutely perfect for my needs. Um, and as I say, if, you, if I can refer you back to um, the video I shot on high sensor versus low sensor, um, all of those issues will be are, are discussed in that video. So in this video, what I wanted to talk about actually was what else is on the market. Now, I've been a Nikon user for probably 25 30 plus years so I've got a load of Nikon gear loads of Nikon lenses flash guns accessories so really I don't want to switch from Nikon to Canon Sony Panasonic whatever because I've got all I'd, it would cost me a lot of money to change but I sort of thought well you know if I'm thinking about changing camera bodies and I'm thinking about switching to mirrorless ultimately what I probably will end up doing not straight away because I can buy an adapter and use my existing Nikon lenses on the uh, the new Z mount uh, cameras but ultimately you're probably going to end up buying Z lenses in the end so if I'm going to be doing that anyway it makes sense just to check really think about what else is out there and um, I looked at Nick uh, I looked at Sony and I looked at Canon and there's pluses and minuses for all these cameras there's no perfect camera now in this video I'm talking about what's right for me and it may well be what's right for me isn't right for one of you guys you know so you have to make your own decisions but hopefully this video will sort of you know push you maybe in the right direction for your particular case so looks at Sony first now Sony have got unbelievably great their mirrorless bodies have got unbelievably great autofocus and for wildlife photography autofocus is obviously so unbelievably important so you know I don't think the Nikon system is quite up to the level of um, speed and accuracy of the Sony system so that would make sense to maybe change um, and Sony do a number of models, you've got the uh, A7 uh, Mark III, you've got the A7R um, Mark III, uh, you've got the A7S Mark III, uh, so there's lots of different models and um, then of course there's the Sony A9s. So I looked at the, the A7 Mark III which is an older body and what I should do to qualify this video is say I don't want to spend five, six thousand pounds on a camera body, I want to spend maybe two, three thousand pounds maximum. So you know within my budget both the Nikon bodies fall within that budget uh, the Z6 II is just under £2,000 the Z7 II is just about £3,000 so you know uh, they both fall within a it's still a lot of money but a reasonable you know sort of budget so the A7 um, Mark III 
is 1750 pounds so well within budget it's got great autofocus but i would need to change all my lenses so you know all the gains are going to outweigh you know the amount of money it would cost me to change systems and the downside with the Sony's is allegedly now i've not seen this myself but the um the lcd on the back of the screen isn't that sharp uh, the evf is better the electronic viewfinder but you know sometimes you need to be reviewing your pictures out in the field and having a really good LCD is important. So, you know, the Sony's are great when it comes to autofocus. Um, the A7, um, A7 III, I'm going to look at my notes here. Uh, yeah, the A7 III um, is 24 million pixels, so same as the Z6 II. Uh, it is rumoured that the A7 IV Mark IV is going to come out soon and that will be 32 million pixels. So, you know, that's in the pipeline apparently. So the megapixels are great, it's the same as the Z6. The autofocus is better, probably, than the Nikons, but only just. But the LCD viewfinder isn't as sharp as the Nikons, uh, and probably the EVF isn't either. Although, as I say, that's not something I've tested out, but, you know, doing research, that's what it looks like. So it means the Sony isn't perfect either. So does it justify me switching a whole system? And it probably doesn't from my point of view. Um, if we look at the A7R Mark III, that's uh, a much uh, higher resolution sensor. Uh, that's, I uh, think, yep, 42 million pixels, megapixels. So that's the same as the uh, Z7 Mark II, roughly. Uh, so you've got that high resolution body. It won't be quite as good on noise control, noise control as the, uh, the A7 Mark III. Um, and the frame rate won't be quite as quick. Um, but you've got more you've got a bigger sensor, you've got more resolution, so it means you can crop the picture more. So again, um, does it warrant me changing from Nikon to Sony? Probably not, because the Z7 II is almost as good. Um, certainly in terms of um, image quality, uh, LCD viewfinder, EVF viewfinder, the only thing I might gain slightly with the Sony is a slightly better autofocus system. So again, you know, um, I'm not sure that I would want to change. And um, the A7 Mark III, um, R Mark III, is I think something like two and a half thousand pounds, so within budget, but the A7R Mark IV is three and a half thousand. So we're talking about a lot of money again, aren't we? Lots of money to change the body, lots of money to change uh, lenses. So I don't think Sony is for me actually. And then I looked at Canon. Um, and Canon obviously have just brought out two amazing mirrorless bodies, the R5 and the R6. Um, so the R5, 45 million pixel body, unbelievably fast autofocus, uh, a really fast frame rate, 20 frames a second, I believe. Um, it's got a great LCD uh, and a great EVF, but you know, the R5 is over 4,000 pounds, nearly 4,200 pounds, so it's a real big chunk of money. But it looks like a great camera. If you're a Canon user, and you want a really good Canon mirrorless body, the R5 looks fantastic. And then we've got the R6. And again, the R6 is a um, fabulous camera body. The AF is good, um, but it's 21 or just over 20 million pixels. And now that's gonna be absolutely easy enough pixels for lots of people, um, especially when it comes for, to photographing wildlife. Um, but for me, again, I don't you know, really wanna drop that low uh, when it comes to pixel count. I would rather pick the Z6 Mark II at 24 million pixels. It gives me a little bit more uh, resolution, slightly more ability to crop if I have to, for, you know, if I'm taking a picture of a distant wildlife subject. Um, so I don't think the, the R5 is for me. And the R5 uh, comes in at, um, I think, uh, where are we? Oh, don't know how much the R R6 is. But, you know, it's... Um, around about, I think, two and a half thousand pounds. I might be wrong. So still, you know, quite a chunk of cash. And again, I would need to change all my lenses. And then last but not least, um, I, I mentioned earlier the Sony A9, and that's a real speed machine. So it's really fast autofocus, really fast frame rate. Um, it's um, 20 frames a second, 24 megapixel sensor. So it's a really great action for action wildlife sports camera but again it's nearly 4700 pounds so above my budget um and then obviously i could think about um panasonic or olympus but i don't at the moment want to drop down to a four thirds um uh, sensor because um 
you know you, inevitably there will be a little bit more a little bit more digital noise now I know loads of people that are switched to uh, Olympus in particular because you know the kit is much smaller the camera bodies are small the lenses are smaller it's great for traveling uh, so you can get a long wildlife lens and it's a, a fraction of the uh, size and the weight of um, my lenses for my full-frame Nikon uh, camera so it's definitely worth considering if weight and size is an issue and at some stage it might be for me but you know at the moment I'm still doing my weights not that you'd notice so I can carry um, the bigger lenses and the bigger um, the bigger kit so that low uh, noise low light noise performance uh, on a camera body is important for me especially for wildlife now the one thing I haven't mentioned is right at the start of this I said that neither the Z6 Mark II or the Z7 Mark II are perfect for me I like the thought of the extra resolution from the Z7 Mark II so I've got more cropping ability but it does have a lower frame rate and there will be more digital noise at higher ISOs. I really like the Z6 Mark II, it's got a faster frame rate, um, great on digital noise but it's a full frame sensor and at the moment I'm using for wildlife a D Nikon D500 digital SLR and that's a crop sensor body APS-C and that gives me as I mentioned in a previous video a narrow angle of view so in effect it doesn't actually change the focal length of my lenses uh, and give me this magnification but it's like an in-camera crop but in effect when I'm out in the field if I put a 600 mil, uh, 600 millimeter lens on my D500 it behaves like a 900 millimeter lens now it's not going to change the focal length talked about that before it's just going to angle the narrow angle uh, narrow the angle of view to give me a sense of a longer I'm using a longer lens but it still works it still gives me in camera that animal will appear to be bigger if I'm using my 600mm lens on my crop sensor body. So by switching to the Z6 Mark II, I'm losing that magnif magnification uh, factor and I'm on 24 million pixels. So, you know, I haven't got a huge amount of ability to crop in quite tight because I've got 24 million pixels as opposed to 42 on the Z7 Mark II. So what I really, really want actually is Nikon to bring out a mirrorless equivalent to my D500 digital SLR and after all of this soul searching thinking about what sort of kit do I really want what mirrorless body do I want I've ruled out Sony I've ruled out Canon and at the moment I've ruled out Olympus I've ruled out Panasonic I've ruled out Fuji because um, I don't think uh, and I haven't done a lot of research on the Fuji but um, I'm not sure they've got a, a big enough range of long lenses so I've ruled Fuji out as well, which does leave me with Nikon. And then I look at Nikon's two mirrorless bodies and neither of them are exactly what I want. So what should I do? Should I buy the Z6 Mark II because it's fantastic low light noise control. Uh, it's uh, 14 frames a second, which is easily enough frames per second for me for the sort of wildlife photography I do. And do I just make sure I'm really patient and wait for the animals to get close enough so I don't have to crop at all? Or do I wait for Nikon to maybe, and I've not heard any rumours that they're going to, but maybe bring out a Nikon Z series equivalent to my D500. Because I love my Nikon D500. It's a brilliant wildlife camera. And if it wasn't for the fact that I'm shooting more video, uh, I probably wouldn't even think about switching. So um, because I'm shooting more video, wildlife video, video footage I definitely want a mirrorless body and also the quietness of operation when you've got wildlife close to you is also a real bonus the noise of the shutter and the mirror flipping up on a DSLR does disturb wildlife sometimes you know even if you're in a hide and you're being really quiet so that's my, my that's been my dilemma over the few months now my situation is obviously going to be different to you know somebody else's situation but that's what I'm thinking I've done a lot of research and as I say the A7 Mark III great camera but it means and if I was starting from scratch, I would probably go for that. I'd probably go, but then again, you know, the slightly not, you know, slightly less detailed LCD would be a problem. So it's not a perfect camera. Um, the A7 Mark IV may readdress uh, address that situation and, and improve, don't know. Um, the A7R Mark III or Mark IV, the resolution's great, but you know, again, um, it's not perfect for what I want. 
Neither of the two Canons. And as I say, I don't want to go to a four thirds system at the moment. So I'm going to stick with Nikon, um, but I don't know if I'm going to wait for um, a bit more time, you know, give it a bit longer and see if they bring out a D500 mirrorless equivalent or whether I go for the Z6 Mark II. I think I've ruled out the uh, Z7 Mark II. I think it's either the Z6 Mark II or D500 equipment. Now, I know this has been waffling on about equipment, but you know, um, being photographers, most of us like a bit of kit, but what I would like to say just to finish off this video is the most important thing is to be out there taking photographs. You know, yeah, it's great to talk about equipment. We all like the best quit, uh, equipment we can get, the best kit. Uh, I'm no different, but you know, fact of the matter is, when you're making a great picture, if it's wildlife, it's about field craft, it's about knowing the subject, it's about being in the right position, um, and then the gear is obviously important, but all of those extra things are just as important. If it's landscape photography, it's about understanding light and colour, it's about composition. It's what's up here actually that's the most important thing, but having good equipment helps. And that's why this is uh, you know, a fairly important decision for me because I want to get this one right. So look, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. It's just been me waffling on, but you know, um, as I say, uh, the equipment we shoot with is quite important. Uh, so if you have enjoyed it and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing that would be great. And if you do subscribe, just press a little bell icon and you'll be notified when my next video is uploaded. And if you have liked this video, if you can give it a like, that always helps the channel. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys and I will speak to you soon.